Am I audible? Am I audible? Am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, so we have completed, I have completed module one. So now, from today, we shall discuss module two, that is losses from precipitation. So here, uh, PO1 means as per uh, Bloom's taxonomy, that is program objective. It uh, satisfies the PO1. So under this chapter, uh, uh, to acquire and apply engineering fundamentals to complex civil engineering problems. So in, uh, here in this model, uh, we come across with uh, the problems like uh, estimation of evaporation and estimation of evaporate respiration by using some formulas. So that are the engineering fundamentals with respect to hydrology and irrigation engineering. Now losses. What are the losses of precipitation or losses of rainfall? So the major loss is evaporation and transpiration or transfer to the atmosphere as water vapor. And engineering hydrology runoff is the prime subject of study and evaporation and transpiration phases are treated as losses. So we civil engineers are much concerned about the volume of runoff that comes out of the catchment area after uh, after calculating all the losses, the remaining water that comes out of the catchment area is referred as the runoff. So before the rainfall reaches the outlet of a basin as runoff, that means entire uh, you have a catchment area after meeting all the losses, the remaining water comes out of the catchment area at a point called as concentration point where the discharges are measured. So this uh, volume of runoff finally joins the natural stream. So before the rainfall reaches the outlet of a basin as runoff, certain demands of the catchment such as interception. So these are some of the losses which take happens in the catchment area in, in interception, depression storage, whatever these depressions on the ground surface, it will be filled with the rainwater and major part of the rainwater infiltrates into the ground. So which is called as infiltration process. If the precipitation is not available for surface runoff, it is defined as losses. So now, uh, these are some of the common losses from the precipitation. The first one is the interception losses. And the second one is evaporation losses. So evaporation losses from free water surfaces like ponds, lakes, and reservoir water surfaces. And also some portion of uh, water evaporates from the soil. So it is called as soil evaporation. Next, evapotranspiration. Evapotranspiration is nothing but evaporation from the plant leaves that is known as the transpiration and also evaporation from the wetted land, crop irrigated area. So both put together it is called as evapotranspiration and it is also abbreviated as EPT. EPT means evapotranspiration. Now the next uh, loss is infiltration and the next is depression storage that is whatever the water that infiltrates into the ground surface, it builds up the groundwater table. It builds up the groundwater table. So when the groundwater table reaches the maximum level, saturation level, there will be a contribution of groundwater basin. That means the groundwater starts moving from one basin to the other basin, one basin to the other basin, since because of the saturation limit, saturation limit, once the groundwater gets saturated, then it tries to move from one basin to the other basin. So these are the losses from precipitation, interception loss, evaporation losses, free water surfaces, and soil evaporation, and evapotranspiration, transpiration, infiltration, and whatever the water that is which bits of the groundwater. Now, uh, these are the course outcomes. That means on completion of this model, so the students will be able to, this con concept of infiltration, you will be able to describe 
the process of infiltration, how exactly the process of infiltration takes place, and also the explained infiltration capacity. So what is the infiltration capacity of a particular area depending on the soil structure, soil structure. Next, identify factors which influence the rate of infiltration. And we can measure the rate of infiltration in a given area by some of the auxiliary equipments like double ring infiltrometer and single ring infiltrometer. And also we can estimate the infiltration infiltration by using the Harton's infiltration curve. And also we can calculate the infiltration indices. So these are the course outcome of this module. Now let us, uh, so now here you can see this figure. So the precipitation is taking place. So some portion of the rainwater infiltrates through the soil surface and finally it builds the groundwater table. Now, so this uh, rate of infiltration, the rate of infiltration mainly depends on the porosity of the soil, porosity of the soil. If you have a very impervious layer, impervious layer, so there will be a naturally less amount of precipitation, sorry, infiltration, and you will have maximum runoff, maximum runoff. So the other way, if the soil is having a porous, porous in nature, especially in case of sandy soil. Sandy soil, the rate of infiltration will be very high. So the volume of runoff that comes out of the catchment area will be obviously less. So entirely the process of infiltration mainly depends on the imperviousness of the soil surface. So if the soil is impervious, then the rate of infiltration decreases and so you will have a more volume of runoff. The other way, the rate of infiltration is more then the volume of runoff will be less. Now here, once the water table, okay, we can see the water table. So once the water table builds up, builds up and it reaches the saturation level, saturation level, then the there will be a groundwater movement from one basin to the other basin. So this is the process of infiltration. So less infiltration in non-porous soil and rocky strata, and more infiltration in porous soil and the rocks. Now, the infiltration, the distribution of soil moisture in the soil profile during the downward movement of water is illustrated in this figure. So how exactly, so you have a graph of moisture content, moisture content versus the depth. So as the depth increases, the moisture content also increases. So these are the zones, that is one is saturation zone, transition zone, transmission zone, and this is the wetting zone. And this curve indicates the wetting front. That is the line which uh, demarks or uh, divides the two soil profile. So this is called as the wetting front. So you can see the wetting front. As the depth in increases, uh, the wetting front also increases. Now, the process of Infiltration, the process of entering rainwater into the soil strata of earth is called as infiltration. So when the rain hits a dry soil, surface effects between the soil particles and water exerts a tension that draws moisture into the soil. So if the top layer of the soil is uh, obviously pervious, then the, there is a, the rate of infiltration will be very high. So infiltration is a process by which precipitation moves downwards to the surface of the earth. So infiltration plays a very important and significant role in the runoff process by affecting the timing, distribution, and magnitude of the runoff. So the infiltrated water first meets the soil moisture deficiency, if any. So if there is any soil moisture deficiency, so infiltrated water builds up the soil moisture, so thereby the, it increases the groundwater table and excess water moves vertically downwards to reach the groundwater table. So here not it is a heater table, it is water table. So this vertical movement is called percolation. So basically whatever the water that infiltrates, so it moves downwards under the force of gravity and it is called as percolation and finally it builds on the groundwater table. So further infiltration is the primary step in the natural groundwater recharge. 
Now the process of infiltration, how exactly it happens, consider a small container covered with wire mesh. So water is poured over the mesh, a part of it will go into the container and a part overflow or it spills out. So the container can hold only fixed quantity of water. So when it is full, no more flow into the container can take place. Take place. So it is basically in the laboratory, you can have a container with soil and you can artificially simulate the rain and you can estimate the amount of water that infiltrates and the amount of water that spills out of the container. So this analogy underscores two important aspects that is field capacity that is volume of water that can be held in between the soil porous. So that is known as the capacity of the soil, the capacity of the soil to retain to retain the infiltrated water is called as its field capacity, that is the saturation point. So infiltration capacity, the maximum rate at which the soil can absorb water is called as its infiltration capacity. So field capacity is the upper limit of the moisture content, upper limit of the moisture content, whereas the infiltration capacity is the maximum rate at which the soil can absorb water so it's called as its infiltration capacity. Now it is a typical infiltration model, so it is not required. So now infiltration capacity. So let us go. infiltration capacity, the maximum rate at which a given soil at a given time can absorb water in centimeters per hour. So now the actual rate of infiltration, you can call it by F, can be expressed as when the infiltration, when the infiltration will be equal to the field capacity. So F suffix C is nothing but the field capacity. That is field capacity is nothing but the upper limit of the moisture content in the soil. Upper limit of the moisture content in the soil. So when the infiltration capacity, infiltration capacity, uh, the actual infiltration is equal to the field capacity. So subjected to the intensity of rainfall is greater than or equal to the field capacity. So similarly, when the F, that is the actual rate of infiltration, is equal to the rainfall. So when the intensity of rainfall is less than the field capacity. So whatever the rainfall that takes place, that, that will be equal to actual rate of infiltration. So if intensity of rainfall is greater than the field capacity, then the infiltration rate will be equal to the field capacity. The other way, if the intensity of the rainfall will be less than the field capacity, then whatever the actual rainfall takes place, that will become the actual rate of infiltration, where I is the intensity of rainfall. The infiltration capacity of a soil is high at the beginning of a storm and has an extensional decay at the time of elapse. That means the rate of infiltration, the rate of infiltration will be very high in the beginning of the storm because uh, the soil will be having soil moisture deficiency. So once the soil moisture builds up, soil moisture builds up, obviously the rate of infiltration gradually decreases and it attains a constant rate. It attains a constant rate. So whenever a storm occurs, since the soil, the, if the soil is having soil moisture deficiency, first whatever the water that infiltrates into the soil, first it starts building up the soil moisture. So once the soil moisture attains its maximum value or maximum limit, the excess water moves down under the force of gravity to build up the groundwater table. So basically infiltration capacity of a soil will be very high at the beginning of a storm. Now let us uh, discuss what are the factors that influence the rate of infiltration, the rate of infiltration. So the infiltration process is affected by the characteristics of soil. So that is the texture of the soil, the porosity of the soil. Porosity is nothing but the space between the soil particle and the hydraulic conductivity. Hydraulic conductivity is uh, given by the Darcy's law of hydraulic conductivity. That is Q is equal to KIA. I think I uh, studied in your uh, fluid mechanics or in your soil mechanics. So the rate of infiltration mainly depends on the characteristics of soil, that is the texture, porosity, and the hydraulic conductivity. And the current moisture content, 
So suppose what happens in a given area, a rainfall has taken place, a particular rainfall has, uh, precipitation has occurred for a period of one hour. So what will happen, whatever the water that enters into the ground surface, it builds up the soil moisture. So the soil moisture level in the soil increases. So after one hour, again, one more precipitation or rainfall occurs. Already there is soil moisture because of the antecedent rainfall or the previous one. So hence, it depends on the current moisture content of the soil whenever a rainfall occurs. And also, the condition of soil surface. What are the conditions of soil surface? Whether it is uh, pervious in nature or impervious in nature. And also the soil temperature. Soil temperature plays a very important role. Next is the vegetation cover. If the soil is covered by the forest vegetation, obviously the rate of infiltration will be less. And also the fluid characteristics. Fluid characteristics, it also plays a very important role. So these are some of the factors influencing the rate of infiltration. And now you can see here the variation of infiltration capacity. So for different soil, so that is time from start of the infiltration and the rate of infiltration in millimeters per hour or centimeters per hour. So now you can see here, if you have a top layer of soil that is wet clay, clay loam, then the rate of infiltration will be very less. And if you have a dry clay loam or wet sandy loam, the rate of infiltration will be about in between 20 to 40 millimeters per hour. So especially in sandy soil, sandy soil, it is highly porous. You can see the rate of infiltration is above 80 millimeters per hour. So this uh, graph explains the variation of infiltration capacity depending on the different types of soil condition. Now, the hydraulic conductivity is the ability of a fluid to flow through a porous medium under the gravitational force. Gravitational force, it is determined by the size and shape of the pore spaces in the medium and viscosity of the fluid. So more the temperature, lesser the viscosity. Lesser the temperature, more viscosity. So it is vice versa. So hydraulic conductivity mainly depends on the size and shape of the pore spaces in the medium, that is in the soil medium, and the viscosity of the fluid. Or it is expressed as the volume of fluid that will move in a unit time under a unique hydraulic gradient. So this hydraulic gradient is the natural gradient because the water flows from a higher elevation to the lower elevation. So it can also be expressed as the volume of fluid that moves in unit time under a unit hydraulic gradient through a unit area measured perpendicular to the direction of the flow. So that is given by an equation that is uh, Darcy's, Darcy's law of uh, hydraulic conductivity that is Q is equal to KIA. Now this uh, figure shows the factors affecting the infiltration capacity. So slope of the land, steeper the slope gradient, lesser the infiltration because whatever the rainfall takes place. Uh, so there is less scope for infiltration. So the entire uh, runoff, you will have entire rainfall will be in the form of runoff. So you can see this uh, figure. So now degree of saturation, the more saturated the loose earth material are, the less infiltration. Here you can see here, it is an irrigation plot. It is flooded with water added with water. So hence, the rate of infiltration will be less. And it also depends on the porosity in the percentage of open spaces or pore spaces in the earth surface. Greater the porosity, obviously greater the rate of infiltration. Now you can see here, these are the two figures which explains the you know, percentage of porous present in the soil mass. Next, this figure refers to the packing of soil grains here. So the water is held between these soil particles through surface tension. Next, compaction. The clay surface soil are compacted even by the impact of the raindrop, which reduces the infiltration. If the top layer of the soil is clay, then the rate of infiltration will be less. This affects the negligible in sandy soil, because in sandy soil, it is porous in nature, you have a more infiltration. Now you can also see here, if you have a surface vegetation, you can see here uh, bushy grass, you have a forest area. So whatever the rainfall that is that takes place, it is intercepted 
intercepted by the forest or the vegetation. So hence you have a lesser scope for the infiltration. The vegetation, grass, trees, and other plant types capture the falling precipitation that is intercepted by the forest vegetation and leaves and branches keeping the water from being absorbed into the earth and take more time to reach into the ground surface. And finally, it will fall on the ground surface, but it takes time. Now here, uh, especially in uh, urban areas where you have everything uh, is concrete, so then the rate of infiltration will be very less. Whatever the rainfall that takes place, it will be entirely, it will be uh, discharge as the surface and off in the uh, drying and all. So hence uh, you have the urban flooding uh, uh, problems because of uh, the urbanization, land use, that is roads, parking lots and buildings create surfaces that are not long permeable. Thus the infiltration is less. Hence you have a more volume of runoff that enters the drying. And also the temperature, temperature plays a very important role. At high temperature, viscosity of the fluid decreases and the infiltration increases, and it is vice versa. If in the winter months, the rate of infiltration will be less. And uh, these are the other factors which affects the rate of infiltration. Entrapped air in the pore spaces between the soil particles. Entrapped air can greatly affect the hydraulic conductivity of the water and also the quality of water. If the water is too turbid, so then the rate of infiltration also decreases. So turbidity by colloidal water. Next, freezing. Freezing in winter may lock porous. So if the temperature falls below uh, my zero degree, then uh, freezing in winter may lock porous uh, between the soil particle. Annual and seasonal changes. According to the change in land use pattern, except for massive deforestation and agriculture. And also because of the land use, the rate of infiltration may also change. So these are some of the other factors which influence the rate of infiltration. So now infiltration rate, the rate at which the soil is able to absorb rainfall and it is measured in millimeters per hour or in centimeters per hour. So an equipment known as infiltrometer is used for measurement of infiltration. And if the intensity of rainfall is greater than the rate of infiltration, then the runoff occurs. Or else, if the intensity of rainfall is less than the rate of so infiltration, then obviously you will have a lesser volume of runoff. Infiltration rate is connected to the hydraulic conductivity of the soil mass. Now, uh, these are some of the methods of determining the rate of infiltration, either in the field or in the laboratory. These are some of the methods. Methods of determining infiltration through infiltrometers. And also you can have the observation pits and ponds, especially in agriculture plot, you can have these observation pits and ponds. And also you can place a catch basin below a laboratory sample. So you can simulate the field condition in the laboratory and also you can uh, find out the rate of infiltration in different soils, different soils. And you can also have the artificial sign regulators, rhyme simulators. So artificially you can simulate the rhyme. You can have a small area and you know the type of soil in that particular area. And through artificial simulator, rhyme simulator, you can also estimate the amount of water that infiltrates into the soil mass. And also you have an hydrograph analysis. So this is a graphical method graphical method and these are all the analytical methods analytical methods whereas the hydrograph is a graphical method so by using the hydrograph analysis we can also estimate the amount of water or the rate of infiltration in a particular catchment area now the measurement of infiltration infiltrometer is a device used to measure the rate of water infiltration into the soil so the types of infiltrometer, you have three types. That is one is flooding type infiltrometer and the rainfall simulators. And the second one is the single ring infiltrometer and double ring infiltrometer. So either you can uh, uh, have an experimental plot where you can uh, entire plot is uh, flooded with water. Then you can estimate the rate of infiltration. 
or you can have a artificial simulation or rainfall simulators and also the, uh, these are the two auxiliary equipments that is single ring infiltrometer and double ring infiltrometer so you can use these are very simple equipments now the single ring infiltrometer it consists of a metal cylinder hollow metal cylinder of diameter about 20 to 30 centimeter it is a hollow in nature it's a circular of having diameter 20 to 30 centimeter and the length of this which will be about 50 to 60 centimeter with both ends open so length of the cylinder will be obviously taken as two times the diameter whether it will be 50 or 60 centimeter so it is driven into a level ground such that it projects 10 centimeter above the ground surface projects 10 centimeter above the ground surface water is poured into the top part of the uh, infiltrometer to a depth of about five centimeter and you can have a uh, hook gauge hook gauge or a pointer as you uh, noted, uh, noted the readings that is uh, uh, in your fluid mechanics laboratory you have calculated the depth of water the, the depth of water above the notch by using a hook gauge so similarly you can erect by using a hook gauge you can find out the amount of water that has infiltrated so water is poured into the top water to a depth of about five centimeter and point is set inside the ring to indicate the water level to be maintained now it's a very simple equipment now you can see here this is a single ring infiltrometer it is a circular cylinder so both sides are open and the diameter will be about 30 centimeter and it is driven into the ground surface to a depth of about 50 centimeter about 10 centimeter projects above the ground surface now here a constant level of water is maintained constant level of water is maintained that is about 5 centimeter above the ground level now when you fill this container or the cylinder with water so it is driven into the ground up to this point you will have the soil surface soil surface so five centimeter above this ground level you have the water elevation water elevation so now i request all of you to mark your attendance in the chat box the time is running out and uh, this is the single ring infiltrometer and here uh, in this uh, single infiltrometer so whatever the water that infiltrates through this uh, single infiltrometer it moves away you can see here some portion will move downward some portion of water moves away from the infiltrometer so this may not give you the exact uh, rate of infiltration so the major drawback of single infiltrometer or tube infiltrometer is that the infiltrated water percolates laterally at the bottom of the ring so it moves laterally so that is only the disadvantage of this single infiltrometer so thus the tube is not truly really representing the area through which the infiltration is taking place so next you have a double ring infiltrometer double ring infiltrometer here you have two circular rings two circular rings having a diameter of between 20 to 60 centimeter now you can see the double ring infiltrometer here you have two circular rings having a diameter 30 centimeter and 60 centimeter now you can see this figure so this uh, inner tube is having a diameter 30 centimeter the outer ring is having a diameter of 60 centimeter and it is uh, driven below the ground surface to a depth of about 15 centimeter 15 centimeter and it projects 10 centimeter above the 
ground level and here the water level is maintained at a height of 5 cm above the ground level. Now here uh, the advantage of this uh, uh, double ring in filtrometer, the external ring, external ring avoids the lateral movement. External ring avoids the lateral movement of water, lateral movement of water, whereas in the single infiltrator filtrometer, so the water moves laterally below the uh, bottom of the ring. So here the main advantage in this uh, double ring infiltrometer, so whatever the water that infiltrates through the soil surface, it moves laterally downwards. So you'll have a better result if you use the double ring infiltrometer. So next class we shall uh, discuss the graphical method of uh, determining the rate of infiltration by using the Harton's infiltration curve and also uh, this is the Harton infiltration curve. So next class we shall meet. The time is running out. So I'll be ending the class. I'll be ending the class. You can leave the class now.